I don't have any slides because I decided to talk like 18 minutes ago. Um, so my name is Chris Pfeiffer, and I'm the head of data science at uh, Cluster Truck. And so I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to explain what makes us different from a real restaurant and or a traditional restaurant and uh, how we use data to our advantage. So in a traditional restaurant, they have uh, data that they call the p-mix or the product mix. And this is the main thing driving their menu decisions. And what this is, is just how many of each item on their menu that they've sold each week. And at Cluster Truck, when we launched, uh, it was important for us to have that same p-mix so that our chefs could look at that in the way that they're used to. But we also are able to go much deeper since we're a vertically integrated digital only kitchen. So really quickly, how many people have heard of Cluster Truck or tried Cluster Truck? Okay, so Cluster Truck is basically a tech enabled delivery only kitchen. Um, so the main difference between us and someone like DoorDash or Grubhub is that we cook all our own food and manage our own menu and are engineered 100% for delivery instead of basically attaching digital ordering and delivery to existing restaurants. So what we look at in addition to the traditional p-mix is for a certain item, if someone ordered it for the first time, what percentage of the time do they come back and order Cluster Truck again? We also look at for a certain item, if somebody ordered that on their first order, what percent of the time when they do order again, are they ordering that same item versus something else? And so we use this to optimize not only the most popular menu items, but the menu items that are more likely to result in a longer term, more valuable customer. So another thing we're able to do differently than a traditional restaurant by leveraging data is that in a traditional restaurant, if, someone was, if something was wrong with your meal, you would, you would say that to your server. They would maybe go back to the kitchen, have them modify it, tweak it, and then bring it back out. But that data wouldn't be getting captured anywhere. Well, those types of errors are even more critical for us because our customer is not eating our food at the restaurant. They're eating it at their home or their workplace. And so what we've done is engineered systems that allow when we get issues through our customer experience team, we document, classify, and store all those. And our culinary team has custom data tools to look through all the different types of issues that are happening, what items have the most issues, uh, which kitchens have the most issues, and how is that varying across items. Um, so for example, if the Indianapolis kitchen is always nailing the Applewood chicken salad, and the Columbus, Ohio kitchen is always messing that up and has a high error rate, we can look at what are those two kitchens doing differently, and we can use this data to drive action and actually result in a better res uh, result for the customer. Um, so that's another way we use data differently than a traditional restaurant. The other thing we can do is, um, in a restaurant, you may have no traceability to a transaction. So if someone pays with cash, or if they pay with card, and then a different card next time, you don't really know how that customer is behaving over the long run. We use uh, customer data because you always have to have a digital account to order cluster truck. Um, we can track uh, lifetime value of customers and figure out where our most valuable customers are coming from and where they're getting delivery to, and then therefore push for uh, traction in uh, venues that are similar to where the most valuable customers are coming from, not just the most customers are coming from. Uh, another way you use data to our advantage differently than a traditional restaurant. In a traditional restaurant, you walk in and they say, we're on a wait right now, it's gonna be about 20 minutes. And th they're doing this by essentially just like looking at their wait list and kind of looking at their watch and making a guess. And most of the time they're erring on the side of caution so that you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised that your wait time was less than what it was. But you really don't know how long it's gonna take. But when you come to Cluster Truck's website, you have no visual clue of how busy we are because uh, you can't see a, a line out the door, you can't see um, the servers looking busy or anything like that. So what we do is we use machine learning to predict to you how long it will be if you were to place your order right now for your food to get delivered. And we're able to do this uh, much better than our competitors like DoorDash and Grubhub because we're vertically integrated. We have insight into what everyone's cooking, how busy each station is, how many orders are being withheld until we have the driver bandwidth, um, and driver bandwidth or cook bandwidth to uh, cook them. And so basically we're able to leverage machine learning to uh, predict our wait times with an average error of about four and a half minutes. So that's some of the ways that Cluster Truck leverages data to uh, be different than traditional restaurants and we're still just uh, kind of at the beginning of understanding how powerful what we can do with the data that we have is, thanks.